welcome to the summit. So uh, to begin with, I think we have heard a lot of critical challenges that the industry is facing in the inaugural session. Mr. Majumdar, who is here, has already spoken. And we would be taking up two challenges that we took up as a company to solve. We'll go to the first slide. You see, despite plastic ban, despite a lot of uh, initiatives with respect to plastic waste management, we still find our streets filled with waste. I'm, sh I'm sure that on your way here, you saw streets that look like this. If you go to the next slide, when we pondered a little more deeper, we realized the reason is that 75% of the plastics that you and I are generating are multi-layered plastics. You see, every day from our households, we don't throw a pet bottle, shampoo bottle, or, a, or, or, or something that has value. But we definitely throw a masala packet or a chips packet out. These are multi-layered plastics. So despite segregation, despite all our measures, the output that is coming out is non-recyclable plastics. Multi-layered plastics cannot be recycled. So that's why they find their find themselves on the streets. Even waste pickers do not want to touch this waste. So even waste pickers pick out the pet bottle and leave out the multi-layered plastics. So this is the problem that we went on to solve. Can we, go, can we go to the next slide? So we saw what was happening today. So as most of you will know, you are all experts here. I don't have to go into the details. But multi-layered plastics being non-recyclable has been mandated by CPCB that it can be burnt in cement plants instead of coal, which is great, which is again a solution at least better than dumping and burning, which we have shown, which is now prevalent. The other solution is there are a couple of players who are recycling multi-layered plastics. And uh, we definitely respect them greatly. However, when we went with the soiled plastics, which is on the streets, which is mixed with food and you know sticking with food, nobody wanted these plastics. All recyclers wanted clean plastics, which are predictable. So that's when we felt there needs to be a solution for the plastics which is on the streets, which is the plastic going to your drains, rivers, your streets, burning, all the problems in the world. And that's when, we, can we go to the next slide? We wanted to build a recycling technology which does not use water or any other resource. Why? Because we did not want water to be contaminated. You can't solve a problem and create a problem. And as, we, as you heard in the inaugural session, India has villages, towns, cities, hilly areas, uh, you know, places in the, in, the, in the Northeast where they cannot afford to use additional resources. So we wanted to build a system which does not use water, which does not use additional resources, and with the least cost can be converted. So th then what we built was something called WOW Recycler. This is basically a recycling technology to recycle the plastics, multi-layered plastics, on the streets, which is going to your drains, rivers, on your streets, into, can you go to the next slide? Recycled sheets. So these recycled sheets are similar to plywood, like the one which you see here, from which you can make benches, desks, tables, chairs. By the way, all these are real photos from the plastics recovered from the streets. And the plus point here is that it is waterproof, termite proof, and most importantly, very close to all our hearts, recyclable again and again and again. That means you're not solving a problem and creating a problem. We have tried not to do that. And the most uh, beautiful part is that, uh, can you go to the next slide? If, I am sure people here love waste, right? I mean, that's why we are in this hall. But the normal people do not accept a material made from waste. So we have toxicity tests, which proves that the material is absolutely safe for usage internally. Next slide. Recycling, if you imagine, it'll be all fumes and you know, it, it's a very polluting industry is what people generally think of. So we made the system in such a way that you can sit next to the system and eat. That's how clean we build the entire technology into. So these are emission tests that claim how clean it is. Next slide. But I'll tell you something that was my most beautiful point in the entire journey, something that all of you can relate to, is that we provided benches and desks, tables and chairs, garbage bins, wash basins to nearly 10,000 government school kids across 10 government schools. But the most beautiful part was when an eight-year-old child gets up and says that the plastics that I used has come back as the bench and desk. This is true behavioral change. This, I believe, I, I don't know if Mr. Anil is here, is true waste to wealth. And this is what we realized, and this was our most amazing moment. But apart from that, we also have many practical solutions. You see, what happens is we build a recycled product, but if it is expensive than what, what is currently being used, unfortunately, India as, a com uh, India as a country does not give a damn, right? You need to build a product that is low cost. So we use it in an application called shuttering, which is a very huge application. 
uh, very huge application. Uh, lakhs of boards are used every year. Plywood is used. Plywood generally gives five to six repetitions. We give 30 repetitions at less, lesser cost. So every builder loves this material. And most importantly, we buy back the boards after use at a scrap value. So that's how we are not only solving the problem of waste management, but we are also preventing trees from being cut. But the, if this is our vision, we faced another problem. Can we go to the next slide? What about the raw material? Every recycler in India faces one challenge. You build a great system, biogas, recycling, but the raw material is not available after a certain quantity. Why? Because it's on the streets. It's mixed with food, it's mixed with diaper, it's mixed with sanitary napkins. Unfortunately, even though I segregate at source, my city segregates at source, despite that India being a country that we are, with, with minimum infrastructure, we still see segregation levels being low. And because segregation is low, it finds its way into the streets, into the rivers, into the drains. So when waste is like this, you cannot recover it. Go back, right? If waste is like this, you cannot recover it. So how do you recover plastic from this material, was our question. So we went across the world, because if you don't do that, a building any beautiful recycling technology doesn't matter, right? So we went across the world, go to the next slide. If you see Europe, Europe has material recovery centers, right? And we visited several plants. So they also have unsegregated waste, although they are many decades ahead of us. But they recovered their plastics using several machineries, straw mills, optical sorters, ballistic separators. But their waste is very different. Their waste is only 20% organics. Our waste is 70 to 80 percent organics. We are dripping with sambar packet. Our plastic packet is dripping with sambar. You can't recycle that. So, and most importantly, it's a beautiful technology. Uh, we personally are a team of engineers. We love every technology that's out there. But this system costs millions of dollars. Operation cost is a million dollar. And it occupies two to three acres of land just to do 200 tons of waste. So this is not something you can cut, copy, paste in a country like India, however beautiful it is. India needs solutions which are cost effective, co space effective, and most importantly, can be run by unskilled labor who are drunk, right? Let's, let's face it, our people who are, who are handling our machines are not experts like you and I sitting here. They are people who are unskilled and drunk. So that's when we came to India and we saw what is India doing with respect to material recovery facility. Go to the next slide. So India used something called trommels. So trommels are nothing but rotary sieves. These are, again, as I told you, we respect every system that is out there. But this alone will not help you recover plastic from the waste on the streets. right? And that's why these trommels are used as cloth hangers in many of our cities. But in cities, can you go to the next slide, where they are trying to use it with a lot of effort, hardly 50% is being recovered. The remaining 50% again goes back into the landfills. So it's not solving the purpose. So that's when, go to the next slide, we spend days and nights in the dump sites. By the way, this is me. We spend days and nights in the dump sites for years trying to work with the waste on the streets to figure out how on earth can we recover plastics? How on earth can we recover value from a waste that even waste pickers don't want? So uh, ladies and gentlemen, after close to three years of working in the landfills, you know, literally shooting in the dark, not finding any answers, we're very happy to share that we built can you go to the next slide? A decentralized material recovery facility called TrashBot. TrashBot is our patented solution. Can you go to the next slide? Next slide, please. It recovers plastics from waste that looks like this. And we have videos online. You can please reach out to us. We have real-time videos as well. And we offer this. In, we started with two tons a day. Today, we are at 200 tons a day per machine. And as we speak, in just two years, we are preventing 500 tons of waste from entering the landfills. By the end of this year, we're setting up six mega plants, that is each of 200 to 500 tons in four states in India. We'll be doing close to 2,500 tons per day of prevention from the landfills. But I was saying that India as a country knows a couple of recovery systems like trommels, vibro screens, optical sorters. I would not go into the details of this because many of you are experts here. But what I'm saying is all these are great technologies. And these are systems that we have worked with. But each alone cannot solve the problem. You need an intelligent sequence of mechanical unit operations put in a way that is compact, requires less space, and requires less electricity and manpower. Our entire cost of recovery of one ton of waste is hardly 60 rupees, including electricity, manpower, maintenance, everything put together. And a common private contractor gets around 800 to 1,000 rupees to process the municipal waste in, in a particular city. Can you go to the next slide? 
So this is why we are much better than what is there in Europe and what is currently available in India with respect to plastic recovery or material recovery. Our 200 tons a day plant occupies only 2,000 square feet and requires only three unskilled labor to run it. Please go to the next slide. This is one of our case studies. It's a town near Bangalore called Bomsandra. There were 14 black spots, which then became zero. We enabled 30 people into dignified employment. What we mean by dignified employment where people were doing it with their own hands. Again, uh, they had to do it because waste was completely mixed. They went on to do dignified jobs. They went on to become supervisors and operators in our machines. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, this is how it looked. Can you go to the next slide? So this is the entire flowchart of how we did it. Please go to the next slide. And this can even be converted into a material recovery facility where you can recover more valuables like HDP, LDP, etc. Next slide, please. So we work with almost many of the largest of corporates as well as municipalities. As we mentioned, we are in six states. We have already exported to Philippines. We are starting Nepal, Bangladesh, and uh, Sri Lanka very soon this year. Next slide. So this is where we are, as I mentioned. Next slide. Next slide. These are some of our performance days. I'm very happy to announce that uh, a w Made in India technology uh, has been awarded globally multiple times. And uh, if you can go to the next slide. From the Prime Minister, from several who's who, but apart from that, next slide. We were this year at the World Economic Forum Davos, uh, presenting at close to three sessions in front of the Prime Ministers and Presidents of the world. We are ha very happy that a Made in India technology was recognized at such a global platform. And we got to share what India is doing as a country with respect to innovations. This is us in Spain. Again, we presented to the Spanish ambassador and, and the entire country as a whole. Like I mentioned, the technologies in Europe are great, but again, the, the, it's not affordable for a country like India in terms of space or electricity or the cost. So yeah, next slide. We have been covered in 150 plus media publications. This again is just a great support for an Indian technology, Indian innovation. Can we go to the next slide? India, India US, and Germany. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. But all this happened because we have a passionate team of people who have left some of their plus jobs. I'm sure many of you are here as well. Left their plus jobs, left great education, uh, and, and you know came to the dumb sites to work with us. So that's why we could make it happen, and we are still trying to make it happen. Please go to the next slide. But why am I here? I mean, I traveled all the way from Bangalore to come here to speak to you all. Is because we have a vision. We have a vision that 20 years down the lane, when I'm telling a story to my daughter, Saying, beta, once upon a time there was trash, my daughter should say, mama, what is trash? And this is our vision, and I believe this is the vision that the summit also speaks about, which is waste to wealth. But I want to leave this uh, entire talk by saying that when I started, I thought I can solve the problem. But today I realized that we are only a part of the solution. As much as we are doing, we are a very small part of the big solution. It is only when all of us, I'm sure there are amazing entrepreneurs here now today speaking about their technologies, their experts, their scientists. It's only when we all come together to solve the problem do we stand a chance. What I have envisioned this entire problem is like a mountain and we are ants in front of it. If we all can collaborate, then maybe we stand a chance to solve the problem. So personally speaking, I motivate my team by saying, uh, you will be shocked to know that I motivate my team by saying tomorrow if there is a technology better than us, we will partner with them. If there is a technology opposite to what we are doing, we will still work with them, right? And this attitude, I believe if we all have, and I'm sure many of us have here, we can actually try and maybe someday solve the problem. So thank you so much and I look forward to your Q&A. Thank you.